Today on JSWood, we go brighter and louder. <laughs> So pretty much ever since I've known about the technology, I always thought it'd be really cool to have lights in my room that blinked with music, which I thought would be really awesome. And a while back, I researched it quite a bit to find out the cheapest way to do it, and I found out I needed at least a couple hundred dollars to do even the most minimal setup. So I pretty much threw the idea out the door. But then recently, I bought some lights to put on my flight test Versoine so I could fly at night and have lights on my plane. And the lights I used were LED strips, and they were extremely bright. And I thought, hey, these are really cheap. I wonder if I could use these to light my room. So today... That's what we're going to do. But we're not going to stop at just lighting the room. I'm going to use a little control box that hooks up with my iPod and the LED lights so that when I play music on my iPod, the lights sync to the music, which I think is going to be awesome. So let's get to it. So the things you're going to need to do this basic setup is obviously a, several meters of LED lights. I got mine off of eBay. I think all the lights cost about $30 when I was done. That was about 65 feet of light, which is actually more than I need, so I'll probably do some other things more than just my room with them. I also made sure to get the waterproof kind, and I won't be using these in the rain or anything, but the waterproof kind has a rubber coating on it, which makes it incredibly strong. Next, we're going to need the little Bluetooth control box. Now, the first one I ordered off of these did not work at all. It just did not emit a Bluetooth signal. I got that one off of eBay, and it was Chinese junk. Just I would suggest getting one from Amazon. That's the one that I got, and it seems to work pretty well. You're also going to need a good soldering iron and lots of solder, because we're going to be soldering together all the LEDs lights together and the control box to the LEDs and all that crazy stuff, and also some extra wires for some extra things we're going to add on along the sides. And all that combined with some basic tools and odds and ends like tape and screwdrivers should be enough to get this project up and running. And links where I got all of this will be in the description, so be sure to go check that out so you can either get those things or something very similar. Alright, so let's go ahead and do step one of the project, which is to install the LED lights around the room. These LED strips came in little static electricity proof bags, and they're just for stores, but I'm going to go ahead and remove that now. I have around 12 meters of blue. 10 meters of green, and 5 meters of red. Now my LED strips came with this handy dandy um, DC power converter to just uh, two ports. Um, and these are really good to have around because they can be used for about, just about anything. I'll be using one of these to hook up the main system. Now I have no way of distinguishing these apart other than the bag, so I'm going to go ahead and take a sharpie and write on the colors. So this is my plan right now. I'm going to have green lining two walls that are opposite of each other, and then blue lining two walls that are opposite of each other, like that, connected at the corners, and then we're gonna have red covering that doorway. Also, it'd be cool to have like lights on my fan, like going around, that'd be cool. I'd have to, I'd have to power them via battery laying on the blades, but I could do it. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and measure out these LED strips and solder them together, and then I'm going to attach them to the walls. So I've measured out my walls, and took a Sharpie and marked on the rubber uh, right where it should be cut. Now these strips are divided into three LED sections and I gave myself one extra section just in case I run out of room. I don't think I will, but I'd rather overlap than underlap. Now before I cut these, I've taken a sharpie according to the color that the light strip is and marked it real quick. Make sure not to cover up the LEDs, of course. Um, that way when I disconnect everything, it'll be easy to tell which goes where. Now after you've finished each solder joint, before going on to the next solder joint, it's good to go ahead and test your joints to make sure they're all fixed, because it'd be bad to put it all up on the walls and find out one solder joint was off, you have to take the whole thing down and do it, because you know it's hard to solder against a wall, sheetrock, bad things happen. So anyway, I have my uh, power supply here, which by the way is a uh, 12 volt at 1 amp, which is plenty to power this, got it off of eBay, used and then I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into one of my little connectors that came with the kit. And there we go. So as you can see, um, everything's working correctly. I have green and blue, which are lined up, which is looking quite pretty, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next connection. It's also a good idea to put some tape around each solder joint just to keep things secure. Now I've got all my connections wired up, and I have about 42 feet of these LED strips lit up. Now the fact of the matter is that these LED strips are wired in series, which means that one light after another is technically getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And over the course of, an, of one, you know, 10 foot strip, you're not going to notice any difference. But, but by the time you get 42 feet of lights, you notice a major difference in the brightness. And a minute ago, this strip was actually flashing because it was just barely getting enough to stay on at all. But there's an easy way to fix this. You can cut that drainage in half if you just make a loop out of your circuit, meaning connect the end of your last strip to the beginning of your first strip. And because I'm using this nifty little connector, I can literally just stick the wires in. Notice how bright this gets when I stick it in. See the difference? 
So that's how we're going to wire it. So the, actually, the dimmest point in this entire circuit is going to be in the middle of the circuit. And even then, it won't be that much of a difference. Well, now comes the fun part, putting all of this strip up on the actual walls. But before I do so, I'm going to take a damp rag and wipe along the walls just to remove any dust or debris to help the adhesive stick better. Oh my gosh, this is so sick. Check this out. The camera does not do this justice whatsoever, but it is insane in here. There's like awesome colored lights everywhere, and uh, uh, you should be able to see it a little better now. Gosh, it looks like a lightsaber stuck on my wall, which is awesome. I cannot wait to install the music controller. I ordered my LED music controller off of Amazon for just under $18. It came with a little radio frequency remote, the controller itself, and some connection wires. Now you guys might be tempted to get one of these. It looks like a nice little LED controller. They're very cheap. You can get them for about $8 on eBay, and they're Bluetooth. Seems like just what you'd want. Well, no. Mine burnt out after the first try, and it never even emitted anything of a Bluetooth signal. And I bought three of these just to make sure that it wasn't a manufacturing defect. It isn't. It literally is just a bad controller. Do not get these. Make sure to get a sturdy aluminum controller off of Amazon. Now, before I use this on the LEDs that I've actually installed, I'm going to be using these leftover LEDs with it just to make sure that the controller works. Now, these controllers are meant for RGB lights, as you can see here. We're not going to be using those. We're just going to be using straight lights. Um, it should still work fine, but if it doesn't, I have a trick up my sleeve that should make it work, but I'm pretty sure it will work inherently just as good as any RGB would work. Now, the way color changing light works, you have a common and positive and then three different grounds for each light. Now, on most things like stepper motors or even brushless motors for RC planes, you'll have a common ground and then different positive. But in this case, we have a common positive and different ground. So make sure you hook it up correctly, otherwise bad things will happen. So I'm going to hook my positive into my positive and my ground into the green channel. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my DC power supply into uh, my uh, controller and also make sure that you have the right power supply for this controller. This controller can go up to 24 volts and down to 12 volts. I'm using 12 volts, um, but make sure you get that right. Otherwise, you will have some bad things happen to your controller and possibly your lights. All right, everything looks good. We're powered up. So I have the green button on here, so if I click green, it will go to that because it's hooked up to the green channel. Now as far as wiring goes, I've connected the ground to three of the pins and the positive to one of the pins. And when I say pins, I'm talking about the pins on this little adapter that came with the controller to hook into this adapter, which will go directly into the controller. Now for mounting, I just used a couple of these handy dandy sheetrock screws to let the controller just lay onto those like that. Also when you're doing your wiring, make sure that your positive matches up with your positive on your adapter. Take note that in most circumstances, red means positive, but in this case, red means red on the RGB scale and white is positive. But double check with your manual to make sure. Our light controls are all wired up correctly now. Now it's time to handle the audio controls. Now I highly recommend that you get a system with an audio in cable like you see here. That way you're not just relying on your microphone. Otherwise, whenever you're playing music and someone says something, it's going to mess it up. For the system to work, you're going to need a 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter audio jack, one to plug into your MP3 player, and the other to plug into your LED controller. I'm going to be using this Y splitter cable. One of the ends will go to my controller, and the other end will go to my speaker. So it turns out I needed to elevate everything to get it high enough up so that I can reach the controller. So I'm just doing it in a really professional way by propping everything up on my heater. Well guys, now for the moment of truth. That's all on, time to get the remote. Yes! Oh guys, let me show you this. Okay, so, all the lights are on and working. Let me check for heat issues. No heat issues there, no heat issues here. All right, we are all good to go. All right, so everything seems to be working quite well. Now because I've wired all the grounds into one single ground, changing colors does absolutely nothing. Now, if you had color changing strips, you obviously would not want to do that. I think it would be awesome to have color changing strips, but they're a little out of my price range when I'm doing such a massive project as this. You can also dim the lights, which is pretty useful, but enough talk. Let's get some MP3 files going. All right, first audio file on music mode. Oh, yeah. Alright 
right guys, I would totally call this a success. Everything seems to be working quite wonderfully and it is pretty awesome. Now minus the three controllers I ordered to begin with that didn't work, um, this whole project cost me about $50. If you guys have any more questions about how I did this build specifically, let me know down in the comments. I'll be sure to answer every single one of them. I'm Josiah, thanks for watching.